Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. You see what he said? Hey, this church here, we need to mark them that teach doctrine that's contrary to what the Bible says, to what we've established as a church. If somebody comes in here preaching Calvinism, they need to go. If they say, well, it's, I'm not King James only, I think the ESV is okay, just go. Yep. Right? Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not faith alone. You have to have So I think you should still repent of your sins. I would say you're a heretic, you're a false prophet. Just get on down the road, leave yeah. us alone. And we take the same stance on the Trinity because the Trinity isn't just about understanding the three parts, but there's a certain part of that Trinity that without it, you're unsavable. If you reject the Son of God, you're, you can't be saved. Right. Yeah. And you know, you know, it is anti-Christ to reject the Christ. Well, you know, Christ means Messiah, right? The Jews were looking for a Messiah. And when somebody says, well, Jesus wasn't God, He just became God at a certain point in His life, what you've done is you are anti-Messiah. Sure. Hey, you are anti-Son of God if you reject the Trinity. You're literally saying that some man at some point became an ascended master and then He saved you. Maybe He died for you. Maybe He, he ceased from being God before He died for you. And this is why this is a, a big deal. This is why this is important. There's all sorts of strange doctrines being taught here recently on this that God took counsel from angels. That's Mormonism. That's Pentecostalism. Yeah, right. You know, that, that crap does not belong in this church. Right. It doesn't come out of the Bible. It comes from Pentecostal professors at colleges that teach nonsense. Yeah. And we take a stand against it. Yeah. It is anti Son of God, it is anti Christ. Right. And if we understood what anti Christ is, I think we might be quicker to rebuke such people. We're supposed to stand on these principles. Mark them and avoid them. It's contrary to the doctrine. Mark them and avoid them. Well, I just like to go and see what the latest... Hey, why? Avoid them. It says avoid them like the plague. Don't let that junk get in your ears because then it might mess you up on your own doctrine. Right. Think about it. It's very dangerous. And I was having this conversation earlier this week and I shared it with Pastor Romero. And, you know, their crowd, their group likes to make this argument that, well, Jesus didn't last, he wasn't eternally Jesus. The Son of God wasn't always the Son of God. He only existed as God's literal word, right? That snake over there, he said, the Father, his literal word. Now, what's he saying by his literal word? It's like, well, there's one man and his words coming out. That's not a trinity. That's, that's just noise, yeah. right? He's saying he isn't God, he's just noise. And what he teaches is, he became God at a certain point. Yep. Now why is this? He was just the Word. He, oh, I don't believe in the Son. He was just the Word. Well, wait a minute. The title for Jesus Christ, there are many titles for Him. Many titles. The Word is one of those titles. Right. That title is introduced in the New Testament. That title is introduced three times in the Bible. And the final point it's mentioned in Revelation 19, He's visible in a body. You see His body and He's called the Word. Right? He's the Word that became flesh. He's the Son. He's the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. And He is the Word with His name written on His slide. Right? He's coming in power. You see His body. And it's like, so we have the Word mentioned three times in the New Testament. And they want to say that was Jesus in the Old Testament. It's kind of like Abraham's bosom. It's yeah. kind of like paradise. Well, heaven in the Old Testament was really paradise. Well, that's only in the New Testament, you fool. Right. right? This is the fruit of strange doctrine of dispensationalism. And to say that He was the Word in the Old Testament... Well, that doesn't make sense. Because they say, well, he wasn't the son. Well, actually, he's called the son four times in the Old Testament. Yeah. And he's called the word three times in the New Testament. And all you're doing is straining at a gnat to deny the Christ. Yeah. To deny the Son of God. To deny the Messiah. And what you're teaching, whether you know it or not, whether it's by intention or not, is to prop up that a man became God. Listen, that's what every false religion in the world wants to teach. Yeah. An ascended master. A higher being. Right? Christ consciousness. There's so many fake religions that teach this stuff that you can become a god. Mormonism, everything else. So we take a stand here because it literally says, mark them that cause divisions. You know, that's splitting a church. And offenses contrary to doctrine. If you take 1 John 5, 7 out of your Bible, that's contrary to doctrine. He says to avoid them. Look at verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. They don't serve God. 
They serve their own selfishness. Well, how can they work for a church that they've been lying to for years? They don't bring it up. They're not man enough to come to the pastor and say, hey, i got verses. Will you answer them for me? They're a coward. They're working in the spirit of the devil, a deceiving spirit, a lying spirit. It says, by good words and speeches. Well, let me just parrot back what you've said. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a robot. I'm going to repeat back what you said. That doesn't mean you believe it. It is theft to work for a church and disagree with their, their doctrine and to teach contrary doctrine. That is stealing from the church. That's stealing from God. Yeah. And listen, that guy that did all that, I would not be surprised if we found out a year from now that he is a total reprobate. We find, hear some strange story of him doing something weird. Hey, I'm, I'm not surprised. Because it takes a strange heart, a hard heart, to do what he has done. You've left the faith, and now you're listening to vain jangling. Vain jangling. Well, did you know that the Son of God didn't exist in the New Testament? Excuse me, I'm supposed to rebuke you sharply. Think about this. There are people that have left the faith that go on to blaspheme, we learn. Why? What were they listening to? Fables. Doctrine that was not sound. Things that did not come out of the Bible, out of the prophecy of God. In, in 1 John 2, you know, he says that little children is the last time as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know it is the last time. Yeah. Back then they had Antichrist. Right. Now we have Antichrist. Today we have people that deny the Son of God. They deny He was Messiah. And I'm not just talking about John Hagee. There's, there's people, oh, and I don't think he's always been the Son of God. That is wicked as hell. The Bible calls you an antichrist. Amen. If yeah. you deny the Son of God, you're not saved. Right. And God wants us to go out. Well, what about brother so-and-so? Oh, brother so-and-so. We all know him, right? I mean, he, felt, he doesn't believe that anymore. He denied the Son of God. The, the Son of God is eternal. Is he saved? No, he's a reprobate. He's an antichrist. You understand how big of a step that is to, to say for years I've sat in a church, for years I've studied, and now I'm just going to say the Son of God hasn't always existed? It wasn't the Son of God in Genesis. God the Father just took counsel from angels on how to create man. How foolish is that? You don't even know when angels were made and you're going to make a statement like that. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Amen. Old brother so and so, brother, brother nothing. Garrett Kirchway, I call a wolf a wolf. I don't like the guy. I've never trusted the guy. He acts like a robot. I've never seen him preach something original unless he's coming up with some strange idea that's not out of the Bible. Come on now. I believe he's a heretic. I believe he's a reprobate. And I would not be surprised if we find out a year from now he's all mixed up in some kind of perversion. Yeah. It would not surprise me a bit. To sit under probably one of the best pastors America has seen in the history of America yeah. that I believe God has blessed to be the mouthpiece of God in America. Yeah. Hey America, it's time to repent. Pastor Anderson's doing his job. To sit under his instruction and still refer back to the nature of God that a Pentecostal, an unsaved Pentecostal professor told you, I'd say you have a heart problem. Yeah. I'd say that you've rejected the, look, look, the Bible. You've rejected the simplicity of the Bible. The Trinity, to a certain extent, is milk. Well, sure, there's a Father and He sent His Son to die for us. I understand that. He resurrected. He'll resurrect us. It's not all simple. It has been revealed though. There are things that are still mysterious. The things that are not mysterious is that Jesus is God. Hey, in, 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 in Genesis 17, the Lord appeared unto Abraham. If somebody says, well, that was the Father, that's a heretic. Yeah. They don't know their Bible. They're contradicting the Bible. Yeah. If they say, let us make man in our image. Oh, well, that's the angels. First John 5, 7, well, that doesn't really belong in your Bible. What's next? What's yeah. next? What they're going to say is what the Ruckmanites teach is that when the millennium, you're not going to see the Father or the Son. It's heresy. Listen, there's strange doctrine coming out of it. And hey, I know, the millennium is mysterious. The new earth is mysterious. We're not giving a whole lot of details about it. But the one thing we're taught is that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, He is our Creator. He is from everlasting. He was before the foundation of the earth. He was the Lamb slain 
from the foundation of the earth, as they're creating it, He knew your name, your sin, your decisions. He's not forcing it on you like a Calvinist would say. He's saying, I died for all of your sins, even the stuff that today we haven't committed yet. He loved you enough to do that. He even died for the sins of those that will reject Him. And they've rejected that free gift. He paid it all. He knew He would have to do that. He loves us enough to do that. And for somebody to have such a hatred toward the phrase the Son of God or the Son of Man shows a lack of understanding to try to twist the Scriptures and say that Jesus didn't always exist. Oh, He's just the Word. No, the Word is New Testament. The Son was Old Testament. The Son is New Testament. Yes, these are mysterious things. But when you sit under good teaching and you can't understand it, there's a problem. Your conscience is seared. Your heart is already hardened. There's a problem. You're a deceiver working your way up through the ranks. Why? Because your God is your belly. You have intentions that nobody else knows. Strange things are going on in the churches that are actually preaching the Gospel in America. And yet, hey, count yourself worthy. Count yourself worthy. We're going to have affliction and tribulation. And God is going to do great and mighty things in this country this year. And He needs people that are sure and steadfast. He needs, I, I said it last week and I'll, I'll say it again, there are men in faithful word that God's going to use now because there's a vacancy. Yeah. I know a lot of the guys over there, there are some great guys. There are some guys that can preach good doctrine, that, that are on fire for God, they're great soul winners, and they have zero opportunity to serve in the church, but now they do. Before it was, why well, somebody else is doing that. Somebody else is doing that. Now there's going to be great opportunities. And look, for as far as our church is concerned, if one of those heretics shows up, they need to get it right with that church before we let them in. Right. Understand? If you're, you're coming at our church and you're a son denier, you're a Messiah denier, you're Antichrist. 